Hi, I'm Francis Campoy and this is Just for Funk. Welcome to episode number 36. Today we're going to learn how to solve a specific problem linked to when you're distributing binaries. Now, most of you might have distributed binaries, but I'm sure all of you have used binaries. Specifically, you've used the Go tool, right? When you do Go version, you get a version here. And uh, that is very useful because it allows the Go team, when they receive a new issue, to see what version you are using and therefore know what code is attached to this. Furthermore, you will be able to get more information than that, right? Like in here, for instance, you have Darwin AMD64. Why? Well, maybe because uh, an issue that appears in Darwin doesn't appear in Linux. Also, an issue that appears in Go 1.10.3 maybe doesn't appear in Go 1.11 beta, which was released just today, right? So all of these things help the Go team get information about why you got this issue. It's kind of like when you say, hey, tell me more about what environment variables you had and stuff like this. This is the most basic piece of information to file an issue. Now, uh, this is something that you can see on Go version, but also on Git version. And uh, here you get some more information, but also maybe like kubectl version, sorry, kubectl version, and basically any other tool, if you're on version or dash v or something like that, you're going to get some information that is useful to the team that developed the tool. Now, the question for today is, how do you do this, right? So we're going to solve this problem in three different ways today. Two of them involve build flags. And then the third one, which is the coolest one, LD flags. Does that sound fun? Let's get started. So I'm going to start by creating a completely empty directory. And I'm going to call this consts, because we're going to be using constants in this case. OK, so uh, let's open it. It's completely empty for now. I'm going to create my uh, main.go and pkgm. Oh, pkgm. There you go. This some someone told me on Twitter. I don't know. I do not remember who was it. But if you type pkgm and enter, uh, VS Code will add package main func main, which for me is super useful because I do this basically every day. Um, okay, so what we want to do is we want to have our constant, which is the version, and we're gonna say we have the development development version, and our program. Rather than having a subcommand, all of these programs are just going to print the version. That's everything they do. So pretty useless, yes, but they show pretty well how to do it for larger commands. So uh, let's do print f running version uh, version. OK, so now if we run this, what do we get? So uh, go build. That's going to create a binary called const. And when I run it, it says running version development. Cool. Now, what if I want to change it to, let's say, well, this is not development. We are cutting a release, uh, a new release. This is going to go to production. So we want to call this production, right? How do you do that? OK, so one way to do this would be to simply go to development and say, uh, this is now production, right? And this is maybe OK. The problem is that uh, the code that you're going to put on uh, the repository, uh, if it contains this, then you are saying that all of the versions are now production, right? So that is not perfect because you're changing the, the behavior for all of the releases. And what you want to do is actually change the, the behavior for only this release. You could add this change only as a commit to one of the releases, the one you cut the, the, um, the release from. So maybe doing in a different branch or something like that. Not a bad idea, but still not perfect. Because just the fact that it's in a branch doesn't mean that this is production. Uh, what we want to do is somehow allow, uh, when we are compiling the program, to say this is production, like this concrete build. The rest, no. So how could you do it? Well, there is what we call build flags and build constraints in Go. And the build flags, they look like this. Go build dash tags. So you're passing build flags and they're called tags, whatever, build tags or build flags. I use both names. Uh, I think that the, the official name is build tags, but if you hear someone saying build flags, it's still the same thing. 
So uh, you can say prod, right? And now what we're doing is you saying, oh, this specific bill is production. But we didn't change anything. Actually, if this was development, right, as we had before, and you run this, when you run the command, it still says development. So how do you change this value? Well, something you can do is you create a new file, main underscore prod.go, and then uh, you're going to say package main, and you're going to redefine that thing here, const version production. Now, if you do this, this will not work because now you are redefining the constant version both in main.go and in main dash and main underscore prod.go. So not a great solution, but we're closer because now we can use uh, what we call build constraint and say that this file here should be compiled only when we are uh, under prod, right? So when the dash tags prod is passed to go build. That works like this. It's a comment then you have a space, then plus build, and then the name of the tag that you want to depend on, so prod. Now, when I do this, now this will compile. Uh, so if I do go build, this will compile, and it will say development as we expected, but if we pass dash tags prod, it will not compile, because the problem is that now we are taking into account both files, therefore two definitions of the constant version. So that's still not good. So what do you need to do? Well, you actually need to do main dev.go and do exactly the same thing as we had here. So basically the same thing as production, but we're going to call it development. And rather than saying this compiles for production, this compiles for not production, right? So by adding this, now we have the opposite and we need to remove it from the main.go, right? So now we have either we pass the tag uh, prod and then this version here that we are calling in main.go refers to production defining main, main underscore prod.go or we don't pass it and then it refers to this definition here which is under main underscore dev.go and is development. So let's try that and see if that actually works. So go build, we'll do const development and go build dash stacks prod. We'll do running version production. Cool. So first way of doing it solved. Now let's go to the second one. Okay. So for the second one, I'm going to create a new directory and this one, I'm going to call it uh, vars because we're going to be using not constants, but variables. So let's go inside and create a main.go and open this. Okay, so again, pkgm, and uh, actually let me copy, so got uh, the constants main.go, and we're gonna do pb copy, and we're gonna paste it here. Cool, so uh, before we had version was a constant, now we're gonna do is version is a, ver a variable. Uh, so it's gonna be var version equals development. And we're going to use again, build constraints and build flags to do a main prod.go. So now what I want to do here is in my package main, I want to somehow do something like this var uh, version equals production. Now, if I do this, this will not compile, right? Why? Well, because you are redeclaring the variable. So what I want to do is somehow change the variable of this, uh, of this variable version before main, the main function runs, right? Because once the main function starts running, it's too late because we're going to get the value. So how do you do that? Well, it's actually very straightforward. You simply put that inside of the function in it. So this function in it initialization will run right in between. Uh, so right after all of the variables have been declared and initialized and before the main function of the main program starts running. So if you do this and you do go build, when you run it, you get running version production. This is not good because uh, when we don't pass any tags, this should say development. 
Well, it is because we forgot the build constraint. So plus build prop. Let's run again. So go, go build. And that's not what I want to do. Vars running version development. And when we compile with dash prod and we execute it, we get running version production. This is pretty cool. And it also allows you to add extra things. Like for instance, you could say, uh, actually I also want to get the data, like the current data or something like that. So you could do for production s print dev production dash s and then time dot now. Now. Now when you do this, uh, let's put it like this. When you compile without doing anything extra, you will get development. But when you do dash prod, whoa, you will actually get something saying running version production of uh, today, which is uh, January, January, June 27th, and all the data and everything. So with this, you get a pretty good idea. This is not a good idea, by the way. Uh, it is maybe a good idea to have the date itself, but not necessarily more information than that. Very often what you're going to get in here is things like the git commit, the current git commit, right? Cool. This kind of works. Um, the problem is that sometimes what you want to add to the, to the version information is actually something that is much easier to obtain from outside of Go. This happens. So uh, an example for this, well, exactly what I was saying, the current git commit. So if you do git rev parse uh, head, this is the current git commit. Once I have this, I know exactly what code uh, you are seeing in uh, the just for fun repo, right? So this is very useful. Very often you want to do that. Now you could call git ref parse head from inside of Go and, uh, part and get that output and put it in there. That works, but there's an easier way, which is the third way we're gonna solve this problem, which is using LD flags. Okay, so for this last part, it's actually going to look, the code is going to look exactly as before, where we're using the var version, and then we're modifying it from the init function uh, when the prod tag was passed. But we're not gonna have any build constraints or uh, any uh, build tags. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to be modifying the value of version from the outside. How? Well, using LD flags. What are LD flags? LD flags are flags that are passed to LD. Easy. But what is LD? Well, LD is the linker. Is the linker that basically gets, so the Go compiler generates a bunch of different objects, we call them, that contain basically the compiled version of all of the .go files that you've compiled. And then it puts them all together, links them, and generates a binary. That is, what the, that is basically what a linker is. You can tell the linker, hey, do these extra things with flags. One of those extra things is, hey, you see this variable here, change the value. This is kind of crazy that you can do it, but it works. And it's actually incredibly useful for this specific case. So let's see how that would work. So when you do go build, you're going to get a uh, running version development. But you can do go build dash ld flags. And the syntax is not the easiest, but and so you need to be careful when you're typing it. But you would do a dash x and then uh, main dot version, which is the version variable declared in the main package, which is that one in the code. And then you're going to do equals, let's say, foobar. Now, when I run it, look at that. The variable has changed. And we did not change anything in the code, which is really cool, right? Uh, we are able to provide extra information that it's specific to the to this compilation, not any other compilation, and will not impact any of our code base. Instead, it will impact like this would be part of maybe our make file or any build file that you may be using. Cool. But how do I do that thing that I was saying before, where I want to actually use the git commit? Well, you can do simply inside of the value you want to substitute with something else. So git ref bars head. Now when you do this, you basically execute a dash x main dot version 
and replace that with the value, the result of executing this command. And the result is exactly what we wanted. You might be, you may want to add extra data in there. Um, I do not recommend going too crazy with it because at the end, it's, go it's gonna be something that it should be easily readable, right? So for instance, when you do go version, that is perfect. When you do uh, kubectl version, I think this is a little bit too much to be honest, but you know, different, different uh, projects, different styles. I respect that. Anyway, that's it. Today was a pretty short episode. Also, I'm recording from Iceland and without my lights. So I'm depending on the sunlight, which, you know, it's Iceland in, in June. So it's good because it's constant light all day long and night too. It's 24 hours of light basically. So uh, that was pretty good. So thank you weather for being so nice with my recording. Anyway, as always, let me know what you think. Uh, like, subscribe, all of those things. And if you have any suggestions, a uh, quick reminder, we have a form.justforfunk.com. It is for you. I'm actually reviewing the whole thing. And I tweeted yesterday a list of all the topics that I'm planning. Check it out. Let me know. I will have a link to that tweet on the, on the description of, it, of the video. Also, as always, there's all of this source code on the repo, also linked from the description of the video. And see you in two weeks.